you know because the original is something like that is truly pure the remake is a money grab which means that they will not don't know what made the actual original source material work in a creative sense so really i mean i'm looking at this thing the, the, the crow now um you know major acts of blah blah all this you know I, I, it's it's futile same thing with like i mean what, what what's it called um david ayer and and um, <laughs> commando a commando remake I mean, David A. I mean, obviously, I don't want to insult this guy, you know, because obviously, Training Day, he wrote a nice script for, for Training Day, but, and obviously, Harsh Times was a pretty good flick, but I mean, A. Hey, man, come on, man, come on. Don't denounce yourself, man. You what? You really want to remake Commando? Commando? I mean, what's that remake of Command? Com I, I think I've already said it on, on the board, but I want to say it out there to all the listeners out there. Commando? Is was just pretty much a glorification of Annie, aka Arnold Schwarzenegger, aka Jesus Match, you know, <laughs> aka what the hell are you? I mean, that it was just a glorification of that that guy with a little gap in, between his teeth, the big mouth. It was a glorification of Annie. The, the, the story, the characters, everything around him was just like, okay, let's just try and create. An environment, a scenario where we can just pump up Annie and utilize him to the best of his abilities, you know. So there's nothing to remake there because it was was was, was an you might as well call the film Annie. You might as well call it um, Animando or Comar or Comariani or something like that because it was just Annie, you know. So to remake that without Annie and it's without Annie in his prime doesn't make any sense. I mean. You want, you want to put a Vin Diesel in as Annie, you want to not try to make the story sophisticated. You don't even touch the story because the whole point of Commando is that it was ridiculous. The story didn't make any sense, which was what, which is why it most makes it so good because it was preposterous what this guy was doing. One man can't be delivering multiple headshots when he's pointing the gun at his, from his waist side. One man can't take on a whole army. A guy can't be shot at from behind turn around and then shoot a guy as he's being shot. I mean, the whole film was preposterous, but you laugh at it and you accept it because it's Annie. Because everything about that film was that this is heightened reality. You know, this isn't real. This is just anything goes. This is Annie's real. This is Annie's realm. You know? So, that's why, like, the remake things, it was always be futile because at the beginning, people were it's, it was a whole nostalgia thing that these guys are counting on. The suits are counting on, like, oh, nostalgia, let's bring back the whole nostalgia of people. And then that whole nostalgia will then get a hundred, a hundred and hundred and fifty mil to hopefully cover the production budget of the film. But people are now learning that I'm, they're not even getting any nostalgia from this because the remix is so far away removed from the original and it just doesn't have that's je, je ne sais quoi of the original that like you know it's ultimately feel and you can't beat bad word of mouth and bad word of mouth people say look man i want to go and see this flick like a preview showing there's no point in going and guys just won't go guys just won't go so don't um unless you want to pay people like harry knows who will gladly take your cash and your free set of to give you a, a, a good review then fine but you know the thing is that man is like this remake thing, I I mean, it is, it is slowly dwindling away. It is slowly, slowly dwindling away. And, I mean, I'm, I'm afraid really, you know, there isn't really, <laughs> I mean, much or anything um, to do with this remake. So, I mean, but at the end of the day, I mean, Hollywood, they won't stop doing it. They're going to keep on doing it. And I don't even know how this thing is going to, um, you know, how this vicious circle of it is, is, is actually going to end. Um, but yeah, I mean, I want to touch up on this other topic as well, you know, I mean, the new, obviously this new, um, Last Airbender trailer has come, I mean, you know, I've, I've, not, I've not even seen this whole trailer. I mean, I was never a fan of the TV series, I've never, I mean, um, Elements, obviously, as you know from the bots, who obviously, he's obviously a very, very big fan of the TV series, and obviously any 
time I I got I got I got his rib, um, he always shows me some episodes or just look at episodes like he's watching when he's watching and, you know, looking at this whole last Empire then thing, you know, it's like, it's gonna make its cash, it's gonna make it's gonna make 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 its cash and, obviously it's sad because I'm fully against the whole against whole whitewashing of the, of the film, um against. Shyamalan, where he's actually putting his own race of people as the villains, which is new. <laughs> um, I'm, 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 I'm fully against the film, but at the end of the day, you know, um, it is so removed from what I believe the cartoon series is, which is that the cartoon series, from what I gathered as a non-fan, as an as an outsider, is that you know it's really about the relationship between Aang and um, the boy and, and the girl. And it's really about their, their dialogue and their cross relationship, which also is in a balance with, obviously, the amazing Kung Fu and the action. But from what I'm looking at at this trailer, and from what I've heard from the previous screenings, is that the acting is actually very bad. <laughs> you know, and the people that they were chosen for the three lead characters are actually bad. So, I mean, if the acting is bad... That means the whole chemistry and relationship that you know Ang has with um, the boy and the girl is going to be lost. So you know, I mean, really, you know, Shyamalan. I mean, with this thing, I mean, I, it's coming out in summer. It looks exciting. Families are going to go and watch it. So yeah, it's it's, it's going to make its thing. But I mean, him talking about this whole oh, this is going to be his styles and all that rubbish. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't buy that. Look, man, I mean, he's he's just talking out of his face. But um. Really, man, I mean, it's like, um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know. It's just sad that, really, I mean, for fans of that thing, you know, it's getting butchered so much, you know, which, which is really, really, really unfortunate, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, I wanted to come up, um, I mean, just to maybe come towards the end of this um, news round, but I wanted to um, obviously tell you guys, I mean, obviously, you may be. Surprised that you know, oh, yo, Double H man, where's the review of Prince of Persia? I mean, I really, really am curious to know who got up from their house, brushed their teeth, took a shave, you know, um, took their keys, took their um, cards, ID cards, or, 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 or whatever, you know, and drove or walked or took the bus to. A cinema complex to watch Prince of Persia by Jerry Brockbuster, aka Brockheimer. Because looking at that trailer, looking at the scenes, I'm like, there is nothing to compel me to give a cent to this film. Nothing is compelling me to give a cent to this film. Maybe, maybe I'm waiting for like a bolt of lightning to to hit me or motivate me, but it's like, you know, almost. Everything that I've seen on this film is all the stuff that I've been fighting against in this whole um, in this Hollywood wasteland that we've been living in for the past ten years now, this past decade. Just CGI flagrantly used. I don't even know what the story is. It just seems like if there's there's no soul in there, there's nothing magical about. It. There's nothing new. There's nothing unique. There's nothing that's really pulling me in. Because like man, look. I'll give you an example because I'm not I'm not saying that's okay. I'm totally against CGI. I'll give you an, I'll give you an example. Constantine, that had a lot of CGI in it. It had a lot of CGI in it. But go and look at that Constantine trailer again because I remember watching the because um, I watched the trailer recently. But I remember watching that trailer when it obviously first came out and I was like, yeah, I'm going to go and watch this movie. And yeah, I went and I paid and I and I watched that movie in the cinema. But it was how the director and I think he also did um. I'm legend here. Yeah. It was the way he used the CGI, the way it was used. It seems like okay, like yeah, like it was not overused. You know, you could still see actors in there. You could still see Keanu. You could still see him acting. You know, you saw, still saw characters there. There was a sense of a, of, of of a story there, and when the CGI was used, it was used in an interesting way, which you know. You know, brought brought us about that X factor to the thing, but it wasn't overused. But we're now in a stage where, like, when you just put too much of the CGI, it just seems so fake. 